Welcome back. This is Vaticano. On January 28th, the prayer vigil in St. Peter's Basilica kicked off the celebrations for the end of the year of consecrated life. Then, Pope Francis received more than 5,000 consecrated men and women in audience on Monday, February 1st, in the Hall of Paul VI in the Vatican. During his speech that was completely off the cuff, he recalled three pillars of consecrated life, which are modeled according to the vows, poverty, chastity and obedience. He denounced the terrorism of slander and encouraged prayer for vocations. Pope Francis officially closed the year of consecrated life with a Mass on Tuesday, 2nd of February, the World Day of Consecrated Life. Meanwhile, for the same occasion, the Knights of Malta gathered in Rome in their Grand Priory on the Aventine Hill. Many know the Knights best as an international force of humanitarian aid. Few know that the order grew around a core of consecrated, professed members, the so-called Knights of Justice. They can be traced back directly to the original chivalrous Knights of the Holy Land. We've had professed knights ever since the very beginning of the order. So it's far from being a, a new thing, it's a very, very ancient thing, it's 900 years old. At the very beginning of the order, um, the, the, the people who went to the Holy Land were professional soldiers, most of them. They were then, um, as it were, fascinated by what they found, by, by the business of looking after the sick. And so they became those who were who were not married, <coughs> and that was probably probably most of them, made their professions as, as, as monks. And of course were already knights. So they, there was this sort of dual nature of the order. And the people you see today are the direct lineal descendants of those people. Um, and so uh, we've always had professed knights. The professed members try to meet every year to renew their profession of faith and their adherence to the charism so dear to them, fighting for the good of the church as consecrated laymen, something that is not really a novelty in the church. It just happens that it's something we've preserved and other people haven't. If we were having this conversation 500 years ago or more, the answer is that it wouldn't be a surprise because all the military religious orders you know, the Teutonic Knights, the original Knights of the Holy Sepulchre before they died out, uh, and ourselves and the other ones, were all structured in a broadly similar way. The Knights of the Temple, they were all roughly the same. Professed members, the heart of the order, as Benedict XVI called them, do not live in community, yet they do pray the office and take vows. Chastity is chastity, everybody, that's not very difficult to explain that one. Uh, obedience is the difficult one. Um, who are you obedient to? Well, in theory, the answer is uh, they should be obedient, I suppose, to, to the Grand Master, and I ha should be obedient to the Holy Father. I mean, it's roughly the sort of how it works. Um, I mean, the, the obedience bit is the difficult one, to be frank with you. And poverty is a sensible thing. Poverty is poverty of spirit. Um, I and mean, we don't, you know, if, if I suddenly find one of our professed knights um, had an enormous yacht, uh, moored at Monaco or was driving a Bentley, well then I would start asking questions. It is a special vocation, but not an exclusive one. Every Catholic male of good standing may be called to this way of life.